Hey guys, this is Nikko. And just as a disclaimer, I'm not an animator, but I thought that I could try these Procreate 5's new onion skin tools and see if I can make a short looping animation just to have as a GIF type of animation to post on Twitter and on my Instagram and maybe describe how that experience is. This is going to be a challenge for me, but it's going to be fun. So the inspiration for this piece is that my friend likes bunnies really much. I mean, I like bunnies, obviously everybody likes bunnies, but she likes bunnies so much that I thought that it would be fun to just burn you, and that's what I'm going to do in this video. So let's burn some bunnies. Well, the first thing I do is I put the animation assist on, and this is the new tool available in Procreate 5. And here you can set how many onion skins you want to see when you're working. I set the onion skins to two because that keeps the screen relatively clean, but at the same time I can still see the previous frames, so I have some sense of where the motion of the animation is going. It just helps me work faster. There's also this small plus icon in the animation assist tool, and that allows you to add frames in between frames. So wherever you are in the timeline, if you press the plus button, that will add a new layer between those frames. It's like add a layer, but at a certain point in the timeline. And that way it's kind of easy to make parts of the animation smoother that seem like they need a bit more movement to read better. At this point I'm adding colors, and I add all the colors on a single layer group. Because in Procreate 5 you can have an entire group of layers, and it will count only as a single frame. But this group where the bunny is painted on, I have set it as animation background by clicking on the layer and pressing the animation background option. And this means that it's going to get rendered on every single frame. So I don't have to keep repeating this graphic for every single one of the frames, because that would take tons and tons of layers, and this allows me to keep the resolution of this animation quite high. So I'm using the grouping also for individual layers, because I have that line art for every single frame of the flames, so I'm painting the flames in layer groups that has the line art for that layer. update on how I'm doing so far. So I wasted a lot of time doing those lines for every single flame and then grouping them into separate groups. I'm sure a lot of that is painful to watch, but now in retrospect, now I've gone through this painful experience, I would give advice on if you are trying to make something similar, just use the big blocky brush and block in that like massive abstract shape if you're doing flames. Because having the line art there and then going through the same process again with a separate brush, to me it seems like a lot of wasted work, because I feel like I'm just repeating the same stuff. And it's easier to visualize where the blocks of flames are in this instance with the actual orange color. Because with lines I need to be more aware of like what's outside of those lines, is this a fill-in shape or is this an outside area of this shape, and then going back and forth. So just going into the blocking in phase straight away and animating those frames I think would have like saved me at least two hours at this point. <laughs> but I'm gonna keep going because I'm quite excited about how it's kind of looping at this phase. I know it's not perfect, but if I keep making these sort of animations, then maybe like this will get easier eventually. And as I'm going, I keep getting these new ideas that what I could now do with these animation tools that I didn't have the skills to do before. It's kind of weird, but I can see that my brain is like expanding in some directions. And it's fun to see that the bunny is kind of burning already. It, it gives that sort of like nice, well-cooked feeling when I look at it. And I can't wait to get to a phase where I can add some like fancy glows on top, or maybe even sparks. See, this is the cool stuff. So at this phase, I'm painting the 
bunny on the top layer and I have set that as animation foreground because now we can also do an animation foreground and not just background. I end up putting this bunny in the animation background and then I create separately a selection from the entire silhouette of the bunny and then I use that selection as layer mask and then with the layer mask I cut out a shape of the bunny from every single frame of the flames because I also used that top layer as uh, animation foreground and in the end I end up putting the highlights of the bunny on that animation foreground just to keep those colors so sharp because all of the glows that you see on this bunny they are not additive so that is kind of like making those colors at one point look kind of dull. So having that animation foreground is handy because I can set that as green and that will keep those colors kind of nice and crisp. This is not really an animation tip, but I often use this selection warp tool when I'm using quick shape style painting shapes. Because with the warp tool, if you make just a tiny little nudge the warp settings then you can keep these sort of like vector looking clean shapes and then you can do some stuff that isn't possible with the quick shape tool alone for example s curves are usually fake by using the quick shape tool so if that's something that you use in your workflow that's just a quick workaround for that here i'm adding the glowing cheeks for the bunny and the way I do this animation part is that I have the same layer copied on every single group of those frames and there I go to the opacity and then I adjust the opacity on every single layer and then I just merge everything together when I'm happy with it so that I can keep every frame as its own single layer. I make the eye blinking animation the same way that I have only 50% of the animation in that I make frames for the eyes closing and then I copy those layers in reverse order above the eyes closing to make the eyes opening. So that just helps workflow to go faster. And that way I can keep the eyelid movement consistent. I keep merging these layer groups when I make different edits because I want to keep the whole file kind of easy to work with so that I can see what I'm doing. Now I'm done with the flames and then I start making these sparks. I used this trick in the Procreate logo reveal animation that I made earlier and I drew these swirly lines as kind of a guideline for how the sparks are going to move. I'm not going to use these lines in the final animation but now that I'm painting these sparks on every single frame the way that I can keep the movement consistent is by having this reference layer on top and I have set that to the same group where the animation foreground is so that I don't have to keep clicking it on it's on in every single frame at this point but I'm not going to use it in the final animation it's just a guide so I paint the sparks on every single layer a bit further in the timeline so I'm just following those lines and this part is really enjoyable to do because you don't have to think that much. But to keep it kind of simple for me to understand what I'm doing, I'm only doing two sparks at a time and then I go back to the beginning of the timeline and then I add more sparks because if I was doing all of them at once, it's kind of very easy to forget that you were doing five sparks and now you have painted only three. At least for me, it's really hard to keep tabs of all the different moving parts, especially since they are kind of hard to see when the sparks are going in front of the flames, because the value contrast is kind of almost non-existent at some points, and I can't control it since the flames are moving. So I'm just focusing on uh, one spark at this point, and then I'm just painting all the frames. And when I'm doing this, I notice that I don't have to stick to the timeline of the frames I mean I can make the spark animation longer than I have frames for because I can start it from the beginning of the animation and then keep going on a second loop of the animation so when you look at the final animation you can see that these sparks are moving for longer than the actual single loop is long because 
the movement is happening on kind of two loops of the animation. So they can take as much time as they need to to go through their spark route. And also I love painting sparks. This is basically my favorite part of doing this entire thing. And just the same kind of trick that I use in all of my paintings basically is that I want to leave the kind of the most fun thing that I know that I will enjoy as last because that will motivate me to get through the hard part like figuring out how the animation works and so on because I have to admit that I have no idea what I'm doing with this whole project. It was just a huge learning process and it's kind of coming together at this point and now I have more understanding how the system works. It's basically just jumping in there and doing it. And I'm excited about where this whole thing is going because I can see myself making more of these already. I have so many, so many ideas. By the way, in Procreate 5, the brush settings are much cooler because there's so much more of things that you can do to your brush. But the drawing pad where you can test the brushes I just didn't realize this when I was using it and I have been using it for almost a week using like a really dumb workaround. So the drawing pad is the place where you can test the brush. But once it gets filled you can easily clear it by going to the drawing pad icon on the top left corner of the drawing pad and if you just click that you will be able to not only clear the drawing pad so you can like make more marks to test your brush but you can also change colors of your brush so all of these color dynamics are easier to test that way that are going to be coming in so just having a black brush stroke is sort of like not giving you enough information when you want to use those settings just wanted to point that out because i couldn't figure it out and then i went to progress forum and they were like the button is right there, you idiot. Just press it, goddammit. So this is how the bunny ended up looking. Pretty, I, I don't hate it. I think it's fine. Considering that I had no idea how to even use any of these tools and how the layer system works, I'm definitely going to use this style more in the future because there's just so many fun things that you can do with motion that you can do with just a still image. So I'm kind of excited about all of this. And the way that Procreate has expanded this animation toolset I think it seems natural and it's not overly complex. And the way that they are doing these updates, if you're thinking of getting into any sort of animation, I think this is the perfect time to jump in with something simple like this, because you don't have to make something that takes eight months. You can just make a simple looping chip and then you already have some of the basics. I don't know, like, I don't know. I feel like I'm getting into the beginning stage of animation just by starting and starting something new is always exciting just because i know that i'm not good at this that means that i can get better at it in the future so i think that's fun and i can't wait to see what you all make with these animations because i'm sure that this is going to be all over my social media feeds like Twitter and Instagram later when I see other artists post their like amazing <laughs> animations and then I look at my burning body and I'm like oh <laughs> but still we all have to start somewhere. Okay I'm Mikko and I'll be back with more painting videos in this channel in the future. Bye!